the others. And so I will uh, keep barraging uh, the link into people's emails until they're like, oh, that's right. Hopefully they didn't fall asleep on the couch too. <laughs> oh, oh, well, that, was, that was nice of you to throw shade at yourself. I did. I went for the tech rehearsal for uh, all the meet and greets. I just fell asleep on the couch after a session. I obviously wasn't feeling well. And I was just I like a light woke up and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Comfort of home. Thank goodness. Rock star. That's rock star yeah. living right there. Rock star living. Oh yes, we're down to we're only missing one person. Oh! Hi guys. Oh! Hey buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got I got flummoxed over there and it didn't happen and this and that and this and that. I Mary said you were asleep on the couch. No, that was me. That was me. Oh. <laughs> Hi family. Hi friend. How are you doing, Bo? So good to see you guys. Great. I love our rainbow of colors here. This is pretty good. Hey. Oh, hi, Jenny Brass. Hi, Jenny Brass. Oh, nip, nip. Nip, I, lo nip. I love it. Thank Alex you. Bacon. Welcome, Alex. everyone in. Nothing welcome, else. welcome. It, we're almost there, Luigi. I'm going to go harass one more person and then she'll yes. magically... Um, man, what a treat. Steve, I, I got to tell you, every time I walked by and I saw you on your screen, I was like, oh my gosh, I love it so much. I <laughs> really, I'm so, I can't even tell you how thrilled and tickled. I, I was like, Autumn, take a picture of Steve in that shirt and send it to Eric. He's oh, going to just yes. like totally flip out. Fly in the company flag. So <laughs> that is, that's the event exclusive shirt for anybody who's watching. That is, we don't really reveal the event exclusive shirt um, because it's part of the fun of it. But Steve, so it's the original <laughs> vanilla ice cover with redone with uh, Spike from Cowboy Bebop instead of vanilla ice. Yay, Melissa! Melissa, hi, sister. Sorry. Sorry, I'm late. I it's okay. It gave me time to model. I, I was modeling. I couldn't get on. All right, wait a minute. Mary... What? You're rocking some Hawaii hair right now. No. I have stopped straightening it. I'm just oh. like, I'm done. I'm stopping. Oh, I just that's let it go that's your natural hair. Huh? Natural natural nice. I love it. it. I love it. Look at all that body. God. But, I love but it. There's, this whole area is such a disaster. I can't even, like, where are the virtual backgrounds? What is oh. this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right now. We can't do any, huh? No. no, on the no. Stre on StreamYard, you actually have to have a cur either a blue or a green oh, curtain right. up. Okay. Um, I don't know. Fair. I'm a little sad. I really would like. I I ran to the shop and I got a stool because Rachel said it's weird when I like sit down in the chair like this and it's just a head with like <laughs> <laughs> the wall of toys. Yeah, you know. uh, it's just beard. It's just yeah, beard and toys. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Just, uh, just a beard. Just the beard then, folds up. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Oh man, it's so good to see you guys. Looking good, everyone. Yes. Oh, yes. Lovers. Yes. Oh, God, I love this family. Oh, so much. Steve, it's it's so much. Like uh, Gwendolyn called me yesterday, and it was hilarious. It was probably like eight months into the pandemic, and Gwendolyn texted me, and she was like, "We we never took care of those metal prints, did we?" And I was like. Mary, I'm like, that's the least thing on my list in terms of during, like it was <laughs> pandemic is raging. And she's like, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. We didn't settle up after this convention. I was like, girl, like that's the least of my <laughs> I don't even know where they are. I think she still has them. Uh what? yeah, she does. She does yeah. in um she's a Washington girl, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and I was like, if this doesn't kill us all, we'll all be back together. We'll all be at some event somewhere. Like, I'm not even worried. But that was just so cool for her. I don't know what spawned it or what sparked it, but just out of the blue, she's like, my phone lit up and was like, oh. Um, uh, she saw yeah. her name. She thinks that way. She's, she's smart like that. Well, it was great. We got on the website yesterday and she's like, um, and then this, and then this, and then this. And I was like, gosh, dang, you are one hell. She used to be a copy editor. Mm -hmm. at some point along the way and just did um just did an amazing job in the 10 minutes that we were together so we set to work um 
making the the copy universe right and then we we had like some brainstorming idea sessions and it, it was really neat so i'm i'm excited for you and for gwendolyn this year cool that's gwendolyn king you guys you probably know her from the con circuit she's she's used to do tons and tons of cons she was tons. always helping out everybody and i, I hired her full time so <laughs> I stole her from jeff zanini yes oh, yes. <laughs> yes that's awesome uh, yes. So what's everyone's next? Mary, what's your next thing? Wendy, what's your next thing? Like, uh, I'm starting to see you all pop up at in in person, real live stuff. What's the next thing that you're into? Uh, you mean for <laughs> live appearance? Mary, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Steve and I are going to do uh, MechaCon Omega, the last MechaCon. Oh, in New, oh, in New Orleans? Orleans? Yep. Yeah. When is in that? July. Wait, uh, next month? Next month. Next month. Oh. Yeah. You're going in person? You're going in person? Yeah, we're going in person, yeah. It's the first nice. time you're going somewhere in person, or have you gone to somewhere in person yet? Uh, we just went to Hawaii, but we haven't been to a con, so I'm we're, I'm gonna wear a mask the whole time. Brian Beacock actually got a mask of his face. <laughs> it's and ridiculous. I was doing that because that would be that would solve so many issues. If you need one, you just send me an image that you want, Mary, and I will literally make you a mask of your. Yeah. That's how we made it what? through the pandemic. Is we made custom face masks during the pandemic. What? Okay, one. So I want oh you and I were gonna switch. So I want one of Mary's face. Wearing, yeah. Yeah. You're wearing mine. yeah. <laughs> Mary needs a beard. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Get Mary a beard. That would Didn't be amazing. Done that. What? I love yeah. it. That's so cool. Yes. I want. Well, whatever you all send me, whatever you want to, uh, Mary. I already have your turtle on metal. <gasps> it's sitting in your autograph packet. Oh so my when gosh. you It okay. looks so cool. Right, bucket. Yeah. So, guys, we're just like you know, we just went to Hawaii, not to blah 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 blah. But Steve, <laughs> there's a Costco in uh, on the Big Island, and there's only one Costco in the entire in the whole world, world yeah. right? But once you go into the doors, it takes you through the portal to the one Costco that there yeah. is because it looks yeah. like you are at the Empire Center in Burbank. <laughs> Same layout, everything. It's kind of amazing. So Steve got us these GoPro Hero 9s, and uh, it was my first day shooting with it, and I was we were with our Ohana, uh, Sarah Linton and Warren Fintz, and we're just, and Sarah and I were like, well, let's go left, and hopefully we can find some yellow tanks and some Honu. We're like, yeah, we'd love to. Put on the mask in the water, and dude, it's just like right here, just floating. I was like, okay, let's go take some pictures. And I took like I one of my favorite pictures ever of this turtle. And Brad is sweet enough to test out and see which, you know, yeah. gloss, semi-gloss. Yeah. You know. yeah. I will be right back. I, I'm, I, so Jean-Paul Sartre, for anybody who, who knows philosophy is famous for saying that we are condemned to be free. And that it's in it's in the responsibility of making the choice that where all the hard part of living is. And I am famous for giving people so many options. I have to find a way to like reel myself in. <laughs> and when we're designing apparel, like the this, this shirt Steve's wearing, Autumn's like, oh, we'll do this. And I'm like, but we could also do, do this. And so we, I found a blue that That's matched. That's all the blue in the art. And I was like, 55% of people in the world love blue. This is a blue that you don't see in most people's closets. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a Navy. And so I was just, I, yeah. Uh, but you'll go on our website and you could like, you could wear it in fuchsia. You could get it in orange. You could get it in. And so available really now at colorworld.com. <laughs> color, color live. Colorworldlive.com. I'm fired. <laughs> But it's good in Steve's studio too. Yeah, it does. right. It matches. I planned that. I the lighting scheme and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Ooh, Wendy. Oh. Like, oh. One of the greatest oh. moments of my life. That oh my one. God. I'm like, I'll never forget yeah. it. And I just held my hand out, and he swam right under me. Yep. Oh. Um, you know. Wendy, I put up a video today on Facebook of the little dude. Steve was like, there's a turtle over here. I was like, okay. And he's on one side shooting. And I was like, you know, with the thing. And it just came, like, it just did this. It went, oh, oh hi. Oh, my oh, God. Okay. And kept going. It was, I love yes. them so, so much. Little prehistoric heads just popping yep. up. Yep. <laughs> 
Uh, Alex, we we definitely do. Uh, does anyone else have a Twitch? I know we're act we're literally streaming live on Twitch right now. Does anyone else have a Twitch channel? Only in my eye every now and then. Uh, <laughs> I think I do, but I don't know how to do it yet. Ah, that's awesome. I think that was one of the things that Gwendolyn and I talked about. Is she was like, I think I think we may. So I I told her to ping me. Uh, Autumn, who's in chat somewhere, uh, lots of you had Autumn as as your moderator today for Hangouts. She uh, is a Twitch spurt, and so if you need some help, <laughs> Twitch spurt, a Twitch spurt. Hey. Bo, Bo, where did your shirt come from? Because that's I'm a little sad that you didn't get me. Uh, where Where's that shirt from? I love it. Uh, CC got it uh, online. Okay. Somebody, somebody advertised it. I think on, on Facebook. It was a fan. I think a fan. Yeah, but she just she she got it online. Okay, well that's that's the next thing, Autumn. Send great. a note. Send a note to Eric yeah. that we've got to do something for Jet. Um, yeah. Well, I didn't foresee. So here's the thing. I started Cowboy Bebop oh four times, five times, and I and I get into it. I'm like, why is this so popular? This is dumb. If they lose the bounty one more time, I'm shutting it off. I'm not. I'm not going to watch this anymore. This is stupid. And then, of course, they lost the bounty, and I was like, "That's it. Why? Why is this one of the most popular animes of all time?" I blame Faye. <clears throat> and then Faye's fault. It's usually Faye's yeah. fault. Yeah. Faye's fault. Yeah. 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 Because our woolons all the time. That's well, why we don't. That's why we don't have beef in our bell peppers and beef. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you could catch a bounty if you weren't starving. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, she tried to sell us on the vegan beef, but that didn't work out. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Man. <laughs> a, girl, a girl could try. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what one day? Uh, I don't even know how we. I I think probably one of your emails, Steve, was just like, "Why don't we just do Cowboy Bebop instead of trying to do all these other things?" I'm in. Let's just do. And I was like, you know what? It'll give me an excuse. I'll watch the anime. And oh my gosh. From from episode six on, you guys, I I get it, I get it, and it's one of the most brilliant pieces of um, I can't say film, but it's one of the most brilliant pieces of art that's been put to motion. And it was really neat to listen to. Gosh, Wendy, was it? It was you and um, Curtis, right? That were talking today about, and he was like, and then this nuance, and then this nuance, yeah. and then. Yeah, it's, he was saying he he watched it nine times, and every time he's still picking up little nuance, little keys, little symbols, things that connect into the story and into pop culture, primarily American music, pop culture, and and the roots of rock and roll are honored again and again throughout the series. And he was making that connection visually as well. It's so yeah, true. it was it was really neat to see. Like those are the reasons why this has staying power because it's, it, it's, there's a lot of good stories, but there's so much art in the storytelling of Cowboy Bebop. And then Steve, I was surprised to, to learn this was your first named role was Cowboy Bebop. My first leading role. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had done a bunch of anime before that and I had done it all under a pseudonym and <laughs> just because I didn't take it very seriously. Well, for a number of reasons, but I didn't take it very seriously. So okay. I used my kids' middle names. Really? And, yeah, I just combined my kids' middle names and used that as my name because I thought this is just a fun thing I do on the weekends. Nobody's going to watch this. Who knows? <laughs> that I, is amazing. Yeah, but it was, yeah, it was my first leading role and it was Mary's first directing gig. That's yeah. how we met. Okay, so that's what yeah. I was going to say is um, I went back and I was reading through one of the emails and you're like, we got to have Mary. She directed it. And I was like, how did I miss this in the email? <laughs> and she played Julia. Yeah. My love oh. interest. And look what happened in real life. Wait, yes. she's that way for me. She is that way. Yes. You're, you're yes. that way for me. <laughs> so, Bo, how did you how did you start? At what point did Cowboy Bebop find you in your career? Tell me about your story with, with Jet. Uh, 
Well, I was just asked to do it. I didn't know what it was. I think like everybody, I didn't know what it was. I thought it had to do with cowboys and <laughs> I was going to be riding horses and, and, and wrestling steers, you know. <laughs> so when you got to episode 20 or 22, were you finally like, this is what I thought we were going to have oh, the whole time? Well, that's when I said, oh, I had the epiphany, you know, around session 20. Uh -huh. I said, oh, I, and I started to understand what I was doing, but by that time it was too late. And <laughs> You know, I when when Andy comes on scene, I was like, "Oh my gosh, there really is like." At, because until then, it's really just the the um. Oh, what's the name of that bounty show? Uh, it's just it's just those two, right? And they're dressed up in cowboy apparel, and you're like, oh. "This this feels out of place." Oh. And, until big finally, shot. yes, big shot, big yeah. shot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Pachu. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And that, that whole part. Howdy. 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 And, howdy. and then you see him. He must have been putting on an ad because you see him in the airport, like, I don't know, episode 24, 22, 23. And he doesn't sound any. Yeah. And then she was we like. Up, we made up that accent. Paul St. Peter, who is a brilliant uh, okay. uh, linguist. Uh, um, he. Uh, we we decided it's just like well let's let's give it an Hispanic accent but it's not supposed to be so it's supposed to be Southern as well so let's make this guy a really bad actor um, <laughs> because he's gonna come back later on uh, which I didn't know at the time and he's yeah. just gonna be like talking to his son in an airport or something you know yeah. and um but that shucks howdy how y'all doing you know I mean it was so bad on purpose. And it's it's like bad singing. It's just it's just glorious. It's its own art form. Yeah. Yeah. And then purpose. Melissa, how did you get it? that was another thing for me. I was um for years, you know, I'd see the apparel, I'd get asked for the apparel all the time, over and over again. And then I would see I was like, This is this is Ed. This is this is the thing. <laughs> and I was like, Oh my goodness. And then I watch and I think there Ed is you're just tricked. You're, it's just such a um, such a bait and switch that we think there's really nothing to Ed um, and there's no layers to Ed. And then we get layer after layer after layer of Ed. How did you, where did you start? At what point did you come into Ed? Um, well, you know, like Bo said, um, I got a phone call from Kevin Seymour, right? Um, yep saying you know we're doing this this new show and mary elizabeth is going to be directing it and um or was it mary or, or did you call i can't remember no i had nothing to do with casting yeah, I, <laughs> nothing to do. I, I just got called and i didn't we all did an audition we were all picked to do this and i think he just had this like he had this great sense and he was such a genius in what he loved he was so passionate about anime and 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 about the projects that he chose. And, um, but he, he cast me as Edward and I think he innately knew that this was in me. And I think when we, when we first went in and Mary showed me the character and showed me Ed and showed me her style. And I, you know, it's like, is it a boy or is it a girl? Is it, you know, like, what is he, she? And, but I, I think we decided early on, uh, well, well, she not decided, she absolutely is a girl, but this is who she is. And she walks that line, you know, right down the middle, but is filled with love and, 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 and effervescence. And I think that is who I am too. And, and he knew that, that we would connect, that we would do this. And then we made something really beautiful. And I yeah. think, I think the insight of Mary as my director also, we found those layers together. We found them and she, Mary, you were so great about, about showing us clips and showing us things to inform. Like for me, you informed me with as much knowledge as possible by watching Japanese together. And I, if, if the other actors came in before me, I got to listen to them because a lot of times in anime, you know, one of us is the first one in the studio and we don't yep. get anything. So yep. whenever we had that um, indulgence of having someone's voice already recorded, she gave it to us. But I, I know I've told this story before, but on the, in the very, 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 very first session that I came in, Mary said, 
I want to bring you over. What did they say? What I didn't hear oh, I was just. Um, that is uh, like onions. It layers. is like onions. Like onions layers. 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 Yes, layers. layers. You're so right. But the very first episode that we recorded, Mary said, you know, before we start anything, I want you to come into the big screening room at the studio at Cap. Was it at Kappa? Is that Kappa, where we yeah. Kappa. And um, she said, I just want you to watch the opening titles. That's all I want you to watch. Just the opening mm -hmm. titles. And um, I watched the opening titles and my jaw just <laughs> dropped. And I said, oh my God, this music is so hip. I, I can't, I, I can't. And it just like, it made me crazy. I couldn't wait to get into the studio. And then it was just pure joy, yeah. you know, recording the whole thing. And, and as an actor, you, you, you hope and pray for jobs like that, that come along, that you really can bring all your goods to it and know that you've you've connected with this character and and i feel like if i could go back and do it again i would do it exactly the same because i feel like we oh, really like we really mess all of us <laughs> yeah i don't think nailed it <laughs> yeah there was never a time i think where um i thought oh uh i, I mean anything other than i just kind of it was in awe the the unfolding of it the uh, it wasn't qu quite the shift that Trigun was, you know, Trigun, I was that bow to speak to the Western point of view. I literally thought I was watching kind of a Western anime with Trigun. And then all of a sudden we're in space and we've been taken back to before Vash was who we know. And I didn't know what I was watching anymore. And um, so we get a little bit of that in Bebop when um, Vicious starts to come into play. And then we finally do see, is there any hope, Mary, do you think that we could find out more about Julia and Spike? Uh, it seems maybe, like there's... Maybe in the live action series. I know that they've cast Julia and obviously they've, they're shooting and Yoko Kano is doing the music and uh, oh, so hopefully they can uh, explore it more in the live action. I mean, Spike I and Julia hopefully. are moving to Hawaii, I can tell you that. Yeah, I can tell you that. <laughs> As soon as humanly possible. As soon as possible. Go right here. Ask us anything. Have you designed Ed's room yet? Yes. Uh, we yeah. have. We have. We have. You have, to, you have to sleep Every in this. Lanai. You have to sleep in this huge, huge human-sized vase. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I think Melissa, if we had the vocabulary back when Cowboy Bebop was done, that. Ed would be a hugely important character to a lot of people. And I bet in retrospect, um, so many either gender fluid or non-binary folk have, um, cause even it's even in the dialogue, uh, who Mary, who adapted the uh, Mark Handler. Okay. Did all the adaption of every, I believe every episode it was Mark and he was writing from, Wendy, do you know, was he writing in Thailand or? Uh, Thailand. From yeah. a boat. Pretty he sure. Was on yeah. a boat in yeah. Thailand. Oh, yeah. So okay. He was writing the whole time from there. And I never met him until the series ended. Really? Oh, yeah. that's sick. Oh my God. Yeah. So like, were your, your scripts were coming by Carrier Pigeon? How did you get them yes. on the boat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more code. Yeah. Uh, he, sent, he sent pictures of himself stepping out of a canoe with his laptop over his head. He was yeah. literally writing on a boat. Oh, it was amazing. No, yeah. um, Yutaka and Kevin did all of that from uh, Zero Limit Productions. Um, they did everything. Kevin did all the, the casting and they just left us alone. I mean, I had wow. Yutaka's brother was in for, I think, the like the first two sessions. We would do three sessions a month, I yep. think. Is that right? We would do three episodes a month. And uh, but after the second <clears throat> set of episodes, that was it. It's just like, you got this. That's just, oh. Let the lunatics run the asylum and man. Yes. Man. <laughs> the art that came out of the, um, so the thing that jumps out to me, Melissa is the, where Ed meets Ed's father and Ed's Ed's own father says, this is my son or is it my daughter? I don't know. I can't remember. And Ed isn't bothered by it. N nobody else around yeah. is bothered by it. And we just move on. And I think that, Ed's gender is so irrelevant to Ed's journey as a human, as a person, to yeah. use Ed's word, that I think that there's really something there for people who will go back. And Ed is such a such a part of that crew uh, that you 
in the beginning, I didn't really get it. And I'm like, how, how did they just pull out of the spaceport with, with Ed? Like, <laughs> is this child abduction? Like, what does this count as? How does this, um, yeah, it was really what, so since, since the ending of Cowboy Bebop to now, Melissa, what has your relationship been like with Ed? Have you seen a lot of um, non-binary gender fluid folks like reach out to you? Like what has the life of Ed been outside of the show? Well, I think, you know, um, traveling to cons and meeting people, I, I meet everyone. I, I've met so many cosplayers as Ed, boy, girl, whatever, it, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They all, everyone cosplays as Ed and I love each and every one of them because they grab, you know, they grab onto Ed for yeah. whatever it is that, that they connect to. And that, that's the most important thing that you grab onto the heart of the character and, and not whether, you know, they are male or female. Um, but, um, you know, I, I've had the opportunity to play other characters too since playing Ed that have, kind of like i don't want to say walk that line the same mm -hmm. way that ed, ed does, did um but but that connected to to um connected to people in that way it, it in that way like when i think of uh dendy on okko OK she's yes. a girl, she's a girl but she's but she's a, a computer genius also yeah. me me me, the uncomputer, <laughs> somehow gets hired as computer geniuses. So, go, go figure. Acting. Go acting. Yes, acting. Yes, acting. Thank you, Meisner. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, no, but you know, I, I, I think I think it's really important. I mean, when you take on a character, be it Edward, be it Dendy, or, or whoever. I think you have to get to the, the heart of the character and you, you have to get, you, you have to go beyond the superficial. Yes. The superficial informs us. And we, when we see it and that helps right. us, but you have to go into the dialogue and you have to go into the heart of the character. And I think on Cowboy Bebop, we were all able to do that. We were all able yeah. to dig deep and get inside. And I know we're talking about anime, but it's, 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 it's deep. It's well, storytelling. Great. It's just all storytelling. Story At the time, it was considered anime. But Stephen, that's I, right. Trece last night, Trece, uh, and it's storytelling. You know, so they call it an original anime series. That's just the style of the artwork. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it. and I think, storytelling. And I think people would put a stamp on anime, like I said, anime. You know, it's like it's true, Mare. It's just storytelling. It's not just. Yeah. It is storytelling. It is storytelling. Yeah. It's storytelling in, in, in an amazing art form. And mm -hmm. I think we were all really, really, really lucky and really blessed to, to be picked on this show and to have been able to bring to light these, these characters the way we were given the opportunity to. Mary, at, at what point did you know you were going to be Julia? Like was that an evolution? I don't because I don't know at what point you see there's a twinkle in your eye. Oh, oh. Uh, Wendy. We all remember. Yeah. We all, we we're like the love interest is coming up, and everyone just looked at Mary. <laughs> Please. I didn't know. It's the only oh my god, Steve, we were all in love with you as Spike. It was just like <laughs> and I especially it was just like oh Bo, you too. Yeah, yeah I, was, okay. I was rather embarrassed by it, but I, you know, I went with it. I, I have gentle like, hands, Bo. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I now know. So. It was I a typical response when we would listen to a playback that Mary and I would just look at each other and go, <laughs> Why am I the only one who didn't know that? You never knew this. <laughs> no. God, I'm You're such an idiot. I had no idea. Ones. Had I known I had superpowers. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think you were, oh gosh, whenever we're like, Spike is really hot. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be hot. How? Anime character. And you were like, oh, making jokes, deflecting. <laughs> As a temperature, what's going on? Yeah. Oh. No, Spike was like the hottest thing I'd ever seen. You know, since I was just like, "What is this?" And then your voice came in. I'm like, "What is this?" 
I mean, it was like, wow. if we, I, I remember turning to Yutaka saying, if we ever see Julia, I'm playing with her. I, I literally said that. Oh, and good. Kind of nice. oh that's amazing. That okay. was it from the beginning. I love it. <laughs> I don't when, think it was an audition. You were just cast, right? Oh yeah, I demand. Yeah. It was a demand. It wasn't a cast. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> there was a threat. There was a threat slid <laughs> under the door. It was like cut out of newspaper. Yeah, I would have poured a Coke on the mixing board if it was somebody else. <laughs> no, we lost it. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Well, tomorrow, I'll do it. It's well, fine. yeah, don't worry. You're needed for a Kleenex commercial next door. All right. Oh, oh man. So Happy when did, tapes got shredded. <laughs> Wendy, how did you how did you get in this? How did Faye find you? Like what a crazy role. I just love that thought. How did Faye find me? I if only that were the case. I feel that um I got I got the lucky draw. It it just at that time I was playing a lot of sultry characters and peppy characters and maybe I had brushed on bits of her and other characters I had done, but yeah, I'm just justifying. The truth is we really, there was a vision and it came from Kevin Seymour and Animes and uh, Yutaka, our producer, and they just made, we call it a paper cast. They wrote out their dream cast at that yep. point. And we just came together so well. I could see how each component, why the individuals were cast, but I think the real surprise is what happened when the chemistry all came together yeah. mm -hmm. and, and that we had a lot of time to work on everything, which is so rare. Yes. I mean, we're doing simul dubs now and that's a show a week. And I can't even imagine. we used to be able to do a show in two days pretty easily, but not when there's layers of overlapping. Right. Yeah, yes. just a ton of dialogue. So yeah, the process was a little slower then. Did you did you have the benefit of coming in after anybody in particular when you recorded or was it different every time? Yeah, it was different every time. I think okay. some tracks were down. Do you remember who record, recorded first, Mary? Who the very first voice was? I think Steve. Yeah, I, I think maybe it was Steve. Steve was the first one in. But then you were the last one, and like they would, it would vary every. We would, you know, spend two weeks a month doing this. We had a week and a half for three episodes, and then I got to QC everything, and go through oh, every episode okay. with a fine tooth comb, yeah. and splice together takes and everything else, uh, and then you know the final before it went off to mix. So you uh, directed and QC. Yeah. It was yeah, Taco was nice enough to give me the the day and a half. I had a half day per episode. Uh, to go in and watch. That's awesome. And did you know then when you were I also doing? I let, let you guys know too. I was like, all right, let's watch down the scene that we just did. Mm -hmm. And I would make it very, it, it, I mean, it's a collaborative. This whole thing is so collaborative. It's intimate, yeah. but it's very collaborative. So I would try as often as possible to just be like, is there anything you guys want to change? Is oh, there that's cool. It that doesn't sit right with you guys um, because this is your, this is, it's. Yeah. Now, do you still get the luxury to do that, or in the in today's like it has to just be turned out so quickly that you don't get a chance to do that kind of collaboration? Well, I uh, I'm, I'm mostly doing original animation, and um, oh, okay, so uh, we don't have that luxury of playback of yep. If we've got a couple actors at once, and then we can if we have one at a time, we can just play back specific lines. But uh, very rarely now do I get to listen to a whole scene so it's a real yeah. trust exercise it's just like i'm pretty sure it's all gonna sound good together and yeah know. so wendy i know you're doing a ton of directing are do you have that luxury or is it just the demands these days yeah. are so crazy that you have to like yep that's good i like the three takes we'll take this one it is a luxury of the past we're okay. we're in a, a quicker time crunch it seems with so many simul yep. pieces and also uh, working remotely has been such a challenge. Boy, Melissa and I were in the trenches right at the shutdown. <laughs> I'm yeah. just, I was right at the say, shutdown. There's that room I know so well that I miss. I mean, we used to spend hours every week working together, and I think that's yeah. your configuration in the corner, isn't it? That's awesome. Over, it's your little booth. It's, it's <laughs> over here. It's evolved. Oh, and, awesome. Yeah, it's, and we got a new computer. We have a whole new everything like that we did in the fall. We just said we got to upgrade yeah. everything. Oh, that's we, awesome. We had most of it, but, yeah, we had to step it up even more. But yes, oh, yeah. when you were in it together from like yes. March. Yeah. In the beginning, we were just really inventing the wheel. How are we gonna work remotely? And every yep. studio sort of was going through a, a skirmish of how do we make this happen? Yep. 
we can only be, have production down for so many weeks. And the demand and the need for entertainment was so critical for yes. everybody at home. Yep. Yep. We really wanted to get content out. And it was also the conversation I've had so many times today in the Hangouts. It was the creative way of channeling all that anxiety and uncertainty into something creative. And it just was saving us mentally in so many ways. Yet, the pressure is so intense for our work delivery. Yep. And yeah technical glitches and cutting out and having equipment fail and oh just it was it was a catastrophe in the beginning it was very difficult yeah, yeah but this community came together Big it time. was yeah. amazing wow. it was amazing Done. It's like, all right, adapt. Let's adapt. Let's yeah. adapt. Let's yep. adapt. You know, and figure out how we must can go on. stay alive. Yeah. And it wasn't even about let's produce art. It was like, how do we stay alive? Yeah. We yeah. need yep. to survive. I want to keep my house. I want to yeah. be able to do this. We can't go on camera. We can't do this. And the industry said, voiceover, animation, let's do it. And every studio, and Wendy's right, every studio had little things and yeah. to get it done. And all the actors were just like, oh, these mics are so expensive. And it's just like, I'm going to do it anyway because I need to adapt. I need to adapt. And the community did. We came together. It was well, something else. Every studio used a different format too, which yes. I'm still yeah. adapting to. Yes. They still keep throwing new ones at me and I have to learn. I'm over 60. I don't, I can't learn new technology. <laughs> Come on. Oh, wow. so Steve, what, what has your relationship been with Spike? I was, I would imagine you were every bit the sex pot he was when you were younger. And as, oh, as absolutely. You, yeah. Yes. I, I got all the girl. All of them. Uh, uh, like what, what has it been like what do fans come up like when fans talk to you at a show like i to me spike seems the most guarded of everybody i yeah. feel like i know jet i feel like i i even know ed i feel like i totally know Faye. but but spike is the first one until episode 24 i don't i don't know spike yeah i didn't either and and that actually was a reflection of my life Really? Uh, I found out that it was actually in the movie where uh, there was a scene with Jennifer Hale's character, Electra. Uh, and I actually had to access a vulnerability for the first time in my acting career at the time. Um, I was playing big, broad characters, soldiers, monsters, all sorts of stuff. And, and Spike was really guarded, which was easy for me. That's what I was taught growing up is not to show your emotion. Everything's fine. Just make everything work. Um, problem solve. And... I actually had to get vulnerable in that movie for the very first time. And Mary gently took my hand and led me through those waters. But it was a reflection of my life at the time, too. I was 40 years old, and I had really never accessed pain or the wake that I was leaving behind mm. in my personal life or, or true vulnerability in, it, in its rawest form. And uh, so I had to do that in, in that scene, and it affected my entire life as a result. Fantastic. And I think it made me a better person. It made me a better actor. And uh, who knew oh. that you could learn something that deep and profound in the context of recording an anime that that was so surprising. Yeah, I I was pretty grateful that I was making a smoothie during that scene. <laughs> and I will never forget. Um, I heard the gunshot and I I didn't know what to think. Mm. I, I was like, do I take a screenshot of this? Do I, do I sh like, I, I, like, what do I do with this moment? Mm. I, I waited 24 episodes to know anything mm -hmm. about Spike and everything that I just learned is now gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I probably would have just lost it if I was like sitting in on a couch and, and watching, I can't even. And then. I, I will say the one regret I have, which it's it's obviously in the in the writing and not in the performance. I really wanted to see Jet go in there with Spike. I really want to see Jet and Faye. Um, but they. But that it, moment with Faye Spike's when journey. he's holding the gun to him. I know. Saying, "What are you? Why are you doing this? What are you oh. doing?" Was one of the most poignant moments in that entire episode as series it was just she couldn't go with him jet couldn't go with him it, steve's right it was spike's journey it was yeah. he had come back with julia he'd had that moment with her and he could let go now that's he all he really wanted. Uh, yeah. i just yeah. i i was grateful I, i'll say when it, when spikes turns the corner and that dude's brother is there that really mm. saved it for me i just didn't want to see ah, i don't know why i'm like trying to hold back the <laughs> I know. 
I just didn't want him to be alone in that moment where he wasn't. And he wasn't because it was it Sheen or Sheen's brother. The, um, I, yeah, I can't so chat. How, it was, it was, she, yeah, no, Fiore, yeah. I'm, I'm there, bro. Like I, uh, uh yeah. <laughs> um, when he turns the corner and he, and he finds like, he's taking on the whole syndicate and then he, he turns that corner and he finds that dudes there. Um, and he, and then they're, they're back to back and they're sh uh, just, it's, it's really freaking beautiful. And I'm so grateful that, um, but I just, all I could think of is what jet that's all I could think of in that moment is, um, I just, I hope that there's at some point, somebody writes something. I hope jet shows up after the fact and picks him up in the ship and they nurse him back to health. <laughs> um, cause that, you know, and the ending on the stairs is ambiguous. It doesn't look like anyone's going to kill him. It looks like the syndicate, like everyone in the syndicate is kind of undecided. Like, is this guy an enemy? Is he a friend? Is he a, cause like everyone's gone. The old guard's gone. Um, he, he took care of the, the guy that just executed the coup one episode before, <laughs> you know, he's so, um, yeah, Bo has carried me before, so I. I, I can yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bo. Yeah, tell tell me, Bo. What what well, is I'm your just the cook on the ship? That's all I. You know. Oh, <laughs> no. I don't buy that for two seconds. Oh, uh, you're the daddy. I think Jet's story was the most heartbreaking for mm. me because he's mm -hmm. left alone and he's powerless. There's like nothing he can do about it. He's left with Ein, and then Ed and Ein go off together, and it's just like, ah, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Trying to keep up the front, trying, trying to keep up the macho front. Mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, I, too much of that actually goes on in life, you know, with men not uh, showing their emotions and, and holding back and all of that. But uh, yeah, I, I thought it was, it was, it was written nicely where um, he's mumbling to Ayn and saying, I don't care if they come back or not. I don't, I'm fine. You know, I'm fine. And then he hears a noise. He said, Spike, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, did you come home? Did you come home? You know. Still have the bonsai trees, at least. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the problem is they don't talk back. I talk to them, but they don't. <laughs> yeah. They need more of the mushrooms, and they'll start talking. Yeah. yeah. They'll have all kinds of things. Oh, the mushroom combo, Who am I anyway? Yeah. <laughs> Stupid frog. Who ever thought I'd get a chance to play a stone character in anime? You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bo, Bo, are you a Terry Crews guy? You you alluded to what so many men struggle with, and I know that. Terry Crews, man, what was it? Five years ago, just really came out and said, "Like guys, like things have happened to me. Uh, men, men need to rethink our, our who we are, how we like. Are you? I mean, you tell me. Um, Terry Crews really kind of helped me um, be be less of of uh, my dad and more of like." a new man. I don't know how to describe it's a, it's a very toxic masculinity is the thing that a lot of us have, have uh, fought to overcome or eradicate. Um, uh, do you, do you have any, I guess, interaction or, or intersection with Terry Crews and the stuff that he did? No, not specifically, but you know, in my life and my background, it was all about macho. Yeah. Uh, you know, playing sports and especially, uh, being a football player, um, you know that you know the bottom line is if you hurt you don't you don't you don't whine about it and yep. you know and you just get. I remember I got a concussion once in a game and I came out I was seeing stars and and uh, they kept asking me uh, you you know you're ready to go back in you're ready to go back in and then what I was told by one of my players I said yeah yeah I'm ready oh. and I started walking toward the stands. I, 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 I said no, no, that way, that way. Oh, that, that was what that was what they did back in those days, you know. With the and I had classic symptoms. I was nauseous. I was seeing those stars. Yep. And uh, but that that was just the way it was. Uh, and I mean, aside from athletes, men generally were like yep. that. Yep. But you know, you add the athletic component there, and it's it's really uh, and and being the man. Um, you, at least in those days, your thought was that you took care of people. You took yes. care of everybody. And, uh, I was, I wasn't really comfortable flying when I first started flying on airplanes, but I couldn't show it because I had to make sure my family, 
you know, I call <laughs> Dad, you know, Daddy, are you frightened? No, you know, it's, it's why, great. Why are you crying, Daddy? Why are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you got to put that down and just, yeah, everything's going to be fine. You know, yeah. there's nothing to be afraid of. And then inside you're going, oh, my God, I hope we land. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, I, you know, I come from that generation. Yeah. And uh, it's... Um, but I, I I like to feel that I've done a pretty good job at trying to dr drop that and being more of a uh, a regular human being who's vulnerable and and you know strong at the right times and and showing the emotion at, at, when, when it's appropriate and and sharing my heart with my with my my loved ones you know so uh, yeah yeah I, I I feel like I've done a pretty good job but I I started way back way way behind on that that eight ball yeah. because it was like all about macho when I was yeah when I was coming up well I I think what's beautiful about your performance with but with uh jet is I didn't believe a word you said when you when you denied caring for anybody you you did it in such a way I didn't believe a single word of what mm -hmm. was like you, you could hear it. Like he was saying these words, but what I heard was, "I love you. I've got your back." The scene where she points the gun at you, ooh, and you just stand there, and she's just shooting and shooting and shooting. That was another one. I was like, "Oh, I <laughs> know." Did you did you feel some of those things in the booth, Bo? Um, when when you have that episode where you go back home and you see the old girl and. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. That was uh, Mary coach coached me through that in a in a wonderful way. That we you know we took our time, and and we we you know we tried to ex I tried to experience the nuance of that situation with you know with Jet, and um, you know I think we did okay with that. And but I'll have to give Mary a lot of credit uh, for that to, uh, to kind of inch inch me inch me along and inch me through to find places. Uh, within within myself that would match up with jet in that circumstance yeah you no know? but it was uh it was a powerful obviously it was a very powerful uh episode and i think it did uh reveal a lot about a lot about jet yeah i i i love it and and chat um don't don't think that uh we're not aware and i'm actually really excited to see um, all the conversation between all of you in chat. It's, it is a really special anime. Uh, each character kind of had that, you know, phase the same way that, um, oh, yeah. man, Wendy, holy cow. When she, <clears throat> the, her memory starts to come back. What a gift. I've never played a character that you get that much of the backstory on yeah. ever, especially living with her for so many episodes, having no idea that was coming. No clue, yeah. None at all. It is some of the richest acting opportunities I've ever had. Just being able to fill in rather than inventing what your backstory is and in such grand detail. And it yeah. just fills in so many blanks as to why she plays her exterior persona so strong. Yeah. There's so much at stake underneath, I yeah. I do love that when it came to that guy, um, is it great? I, I just, you didn't know whether to love or hate him. Like the whole, where she like signs on the dotted line and he, then she, they're like, yes, you get his debts. And she was like, ah, but you, you just, you just never like, did he love her? Did he not love? Like, um, it was so, uh, Faye, Faye has to deal with so much, uh, in which she knows nothing, and there's just there's no answers to anything. Uh, when she runs back, and she has that memory, and she's seeing where she used to live, and you're seeing the, in in I think a lot of us wanted there to be something there when she stopped running. Oh, mm. That's a lovely thought. Yeah. Yeah. This story doesn't fill in all the blanks. This story doesn't. Nope give you uh, neat and tidy closure. You mm -hmm. are left intellectually to make some of those decisions. And I think that's yes. what we respect about anime is that it, it speaks up to your intellect in many ways. Yep. Yeah. I think what has made this story timeless is that uh, people can see themselves. Mm -hmm. They can, they can identify with, with jet when he's, they can identify with Ed when they can identify there's that you all give us so much. It's so real. And so raw. So Mary, 
freaking amazing job. Clearly, your your fingertips are all over the legacy of this. Well, here's the to the idea of as adult. The secret to adulthood is that we're all winging it because I didn't know what I was doing. And, <laughs> You know, let's just make something for us because nobody's ever going to see this show, right? There's no, <laughs> there's no Cartoon Network. There's no Adult Swim. There's no internet. There's no nothing, you know? So it's just like, let's just make this for us. It's gorgeous. It's ours not to screw it up. They had kind of abandoned it in Japan too. Oh, I love uh, it. So when we did, I mean, that's sort of like the greatest compliment about this is when Steve and I forget which which con we we were at where we got to meet the creators and be on a panel with them. And they said, we released it, it was edited. We released six episodes out of orders, out of order, it went nowhere. So we just, they just dumped it to the, to the States and we well, got it. And it wasn't until after the dub came out that all of a sudden it got re-released in Japan and I had no idea about any of that. You know, we're just, we sit in a dark room like we all are right now, usually a little cleaner than mine uh, and, you know, and create and, and, and tell a story. Uh, but this was such a beautiful story. It was like real, it was ours just not to screw up. And, and the, the biggest thing I learned from this show was, was about context and yeah. how important yeah. context is. Because in anime, we don't get a lot of context. You go in, they're going to preview it in Japanese. Oh, right. Oh, right. You know? Or beep, beep, oh. beep, go. Yeah. Yeah. So with this, I really wanted, you know, the little that I knew because I was watching it in real time with the actors. Uh, I didn't get to see the entire series so much so that one of our producers, Hario, <laughs> came up to me before the last set of uh, says and just spoiled the ending for me. And I was oh. like, burst into tears. What? Oh. <laughs> what? Why would you tell me? Well, yeah, why would you say that? <laughs> what a yeah. terrible human being. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we're as I knew was going to happen. We're uh, careening towards the end of the panel. Melissa, sh give me something that really, really, maybe a memory that's uh, stuck with you for all these years, or um, something that really jumps out to you. One of the times, either at a convention with a fan, or one time when you've watched. What's something from Cowboy Bebop that, if you, we have the whole world as your platform now. Um, um, I will, well, one thing that stands out to me is when all of us appeared together at Anime Expo, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. 17, 18. The Bebop Jazz Experience. That whole job, yes. Oh. The Jazz Experience. And there was, an, and I have gotten some beautiful letters from, from fans. Like, they, they will come up to me yeah. and say, I have a letter for you. Don't read it right now. Read it later when you're by yourself. I've, I've, I still have some right here in my desk that yeah. I, I've saved them. But there was a, I've had some deep letters from fans. Mostly, mostly, I want to say, mostly young women, who like what we were talking about before. Who, yeah. Who, who didn't know quite where they fell and what line to walk and and were were depressed and facing suicide and facing family who were not accepting and they would say it's because of you and because of Edward that I am here right now and i remember when we were at that con together and this girl stood up she was so brave and she told us her story trembling and, and trembling and crying and we were all on stage on a panel together and we all got down and we all hugged her and this is why we do what we do yep i mean who knew who knew that we would reach people on this level yep who knew? god bless all of us for <laughs> Serious for being able to, to for given this opportunity that we somehow were able to connect and tap in and especially Edward for me to be able to connect on a level that I really I had no idea that it would it would connect so yeah. deeply. deeply. That's my takeaway and my takeaway that's my takeaway now years yeah. after doing the show. Yep. But if I take away from the f initial experience is the, the freedom as an actor to create something 
and the time that we had that Mary spoke of, that we were given time in the studio. Usually it's boom, 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 <laughs> knock out yep. 30 to 50 loops an hour and you're done and get out, you know? And yep. this, we had time. Yep. We had time. And the other thing that I take away is Steve would, have, there would be like this flattened out cigarette <laughs> in the <laughs> <laughs> and I would be like, who left their cigarette here? And Murray would say, oh, that was Steve. So, you know, when he spiked, he wanted to hold a cigarette. Yeah. And I'd be like, ooh, spike. <laughs> <laughs> ooh. Well, it makes a difference. Holding a pencil in your mouth yeah. as if you were holding a cigarette and talking is very different than holding an actual cigarette. And I was smoking at the time. So I said, Steve, take this. It makes a difference. And he would do ADR whenever Spike had a cigarette in his mouth. He would not lit, but he would have a cigarette. I, have a cigarette. I, I, remember I tried to save them. I'm sorry I left it in the studio. I tried to save them. I had one of those those uh books the day planners yeah with the little plastic envelope like you have when you're in school <laughs> yeah and i would carefully pack up the cigarette each time and put it in there and every <laughs> single time i'd go back in the studio i didn't want to bother her for any more cigarettes because i know they were expensive i'd pull it out and it was just oh. a bunch of crumbs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or completely flat like you were yeah. saying so. that is the most. It's chewing tobacco yeah oh yeah. man yeah. All right, Bo, what, what is it for you all these years later, man? What what just really grabs you? Well, that experience at Anime Expo is just extraordinary. Uh, to have that, that young lady have the courage to get into that up to that mic and express her very personal feelings. Uh, that that whole moment was uh, and I think Steve let us down there and he said, let's go. And we I think we all were ready anyway. <laughs> we all were ready. <laughs> We circled her and we hugged her and we're all weeping. Uh, mm -hmm. That moment is probably the strongest yeah. of, of, that I've had in, in terms of, I've had a lot of, a lot of wonderful expressions of, uh, about Kawi Bebop, how it has a, had a positive effect on people's lives. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just the best uh, going to conventions and having, having uh, the fans explain their experience uh, to us. I mean, it just warms your heart, you know, to feel yeah. you you've done a little something for for humanity. And who would have thought, you know, anime and we're we're actually affecting people as I think as Melissa said on, on such a deep level. Yeah. Uh, it's just and to, to have been thrust into that situation through no fault of my own is is a, was a real blessing. Very cool. All right, Steve. What uh, jumps out to you, my friend? Oh, man. Well, all of that, that, that they said. Yeah. I, th I think on even a grander scale, working on a project like this that has this kind of uh, legs. longevity, yep. legs, goes multi-generational and affects people in positive ways, yeah. made me realize the true value of art. And yep. also, when we meet people like that who are so brave to share their stories with us, how they've been affected, I think it it empowers people to realize that they are so much more powerful than they give themselves credit for. This this young girl who was on the verge of suicide affected our lives permanently by having yeah. the guts to stand up there and share that story. And I think she's probably helped thousands of people, if not like her. more yep. like her. And, yep. and to be part of something like that is humbling and life-changing. And I know it changed me on a cellular level and, and made me more aware of our own personal power and the, and mm, yeah. really the, the power of the art form that we're working in. And, and the fact that we've become a family when we never even worked together in the same room. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I love these together. people. These, uh, oh. you have no idea how exciting this is for me to get to spend time <laughs> with these people. They are my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I love this family that we've created and it's oh. worldwide. Anybody it. who loves Bebop is part of our family too. So. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh man, I yeah, yeah. I, uh, I I'm I'm sad it took me so long. I, I I'm just I, glad you stuck with it, Brad. I'm, I'm glad yeah. you gave it the chance. Well, glad you came around. It's so yeah. crazy. We would see, you know, we did. We used to do a hundred shows a year, thirty eight different states, and just over and over again, Steve Bloom, Steve Bloom, Steve Bloom, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm just. I'm gonna... sorry. I kept calling. I, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I was God, like that guy again. You're Leave so me alone. <laughs> you dork. I was like I'm gonna, we're gonna make a spike. I asked. It was, it was really neat. I met, um, I met an artist at a show in Florida. Probably, golly, it's either Holiday Matsuri or AFO, um, Anime Festival Orlando. And he, he was struggling. He was in a tough place. 
he had really gotten away from his art and let the things of the world, his life kind of creep into and crowd out this art that he loved to do. And, and I was, we were really trying to help any artist we could. And we had like sold the farm, done the Kickstarter, living in an RV. And I was like, well, if there's one character that I can tell you I need, that I could pay you for right now this second, it's Spike from Cowboy <laughs> Bebop. And he, he did the piece. Um, he, he only, he was only able to sketch it, never finished it. I sent it off to a colorist to color and, and never heard from him really for a couple years. And I just, I saw Steve so much and I was like, well, we got a Wolverine and we got a spike. I'm just going to go up to this guy and see if he's interested in having these on his table. We're going to see him all over the place. And, uh, Steve was just such a terrific human and was like, these are fantastic. Absolutely. Let's do this. Um, and then we would just see him just, it, it was neat to just, we check in, it'd be a quick couple minutes. How you do it, how the kids, how, okay, cool. All right. We'll see you in the next city. Um, and it was, it was really neat. And I had no idea that that was going to lead to, to this, uh, Wendy, what really sticks to you? There's so much I could say, I'll give you a condensed version, but basically, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of having a couple epiphanies. I think one, it was such brave storytelling featuring female characters. Yes. Almost equally. And it had really dawned on me that that was a brave step for its time. There were it's taken decades to get to a point where women are really leading casts. Yep. And it's happening more and more. And and I think Japan has really gotten that in a big way culturally quicker than perhaps uh, Western storytelling has. So that is huge. Yeah, a lot of the cast was male, but a lot of the key characters were entrusted to women. So yep. that's huge. Also, it just dawned on me, what would it have been like if um, we'd had a male director? Oh I think yeah. We really found an equalizing factor for the yin and yang of the yes. show, which is the full integration of the male, female, the sacred feminine, honoring the divine, all of that comes together. And that is the goal. That right. is that is the ultimate goal in integrating yourself as a human being. So to have the show balanced really in many ways by female energy is, is just dawning on me. And I, I'm just profoundly grateful to be a part of something like that. That's, I love the kind of woman that can kick my ass. Yeah. <laughs> Mary. I, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, and I get to live with her. That's <laughs> no! All right. Mary, when you're not kicking Steve's ass, what? <laughs> tell, tell us what this has meant to you. Uh, oh, it's, it's everything. Melissa and, and Bo and Steve and Wendy said, I mean, I, I, it just changed our lives to be a part of something like this. It was just so important not to screw it up. And I'm really glad that we didn't, you know, that we, you guys trusted me as a first time idiot director. Uh, and that, that launched my career and it, and it launched just my understanding of storytelling. Like Bebop tells a story through equal parts, animation, dialogue, and music. Yep. And it's not all at the same time, you yep. know? I mean, it, it, there's, there's a, a breathing to this storytelling and it's not all, all the time, all the time, all the time. It's yep. like the, the fact that, that it, Watanabe son created this show that was just so, delicate in so many ways and it was unlike anything I'd ever seen and I'm just so grateful to have been a part of this and grateful to Kevin and Yutaka for bringing us all together because this is family this is just it's family and I cannot wait to get you guys the, our backyard again and we can get some nice <laughs> vegan food and, and reminisce and, and just turn our, our day nights again yeah. We've yeah. been threatening to meet at each other's homes for a while and now we can do that again. Yeah. Yeah. You can come to Hawaii with us. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Bebop well, reunion in Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And first time to the Big Island was with Melissa at Hawaii Con. Yeah. And That's I can remember right. us being in the ocean and looking up at Mauna Kea and the observatories and going to panels with a, with hair like this. And we're coming out of the water and would go to a panel. I know. Yeah. And just, 
I don't know. Right. Our lives have have always been apart. You know, it's just like it's this. It's like throwing a a, a stone in in the pond and, and the ripple and we all tend to go out but you know ripples always come back in too mm -hmm. so it's just like we've always been a part of each other's lives and it's uh, very well, intimate and very grateful i uh you all dance like no one was watching oh, um, yes. and, and because you did um we can hear the music oh, oh Brad. so i I'm just I I'm so blessed, but mo so many of you have had tech run-throughs that went so far beyond um, what to click on, and I'm so very grateful, Steve. Thank you so much for telling me that anything else was just not worth uh, <laughs> the the salt that, and not that there aren't other great stories that have been told, but I am so very grateful for the opportunity to finally get to episode six and beyond, and and uh, Bo, thank you, like. For for a dad of six, he's about to have a no, two more babies. Well, <laughs> I'll have number six will be coming up, but I I, um, I just really appreciate Jet's character, Bo, and um, the that overcoming the tough. You know, I'm a football guy, um, and I I very much uh, as I I saw myself as you were talking, and you know I. I, I am insensitive. If there's not blood, I, I tend to say, you know, like, um, save your crying for like when you're, when your parents die or when your grandparents die or send your, uh, so I, I'll try to be <laughs> more sensitive, but I just can't. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you guys are the best. Um, Can I, I one thing before we go, please, please I just do wanted to say as we get back to go going to conventions, that we do love appearing together as a bebop stock. Mm. So if you are involved in a convention where you'd like to have us uh, join you, we're very yeah. interested in doing a bebop stop, stop in yeah. your town too. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we'll yeah. read the script yeah. for you. We'll do a live yeah. script reading Bye, and it'll be amazing. Oh yep, yep, man. Yep. All right, bring Ganymede well, lobster for everyone. <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> Just leave, like that, oh. leave that slime uh, in the refrigerator, Steve. Don't be bringing that slime. <laughs> no, yeah. you don't leave it in the refrigerator. Don't. No, leave was, it. Didn't you read the message at the end? <laughs> oh, man. I love it. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, uh, we're going to leave all the pages open, everyone who's out there uh, in TV land. We're going to leave everyone's page open until 11 p.m. Pacific. Please, by all, if you have never met, anyone on this cast please do yourself a favor and take the opportunity to go book a hangout it is the coolest thing to just sit and chill and talk with somebody um that that has made something that means this much to you so thank you everybody um feel free don't feel like the panel is the end of it um and even if we don't do it today we'll we'll get with these guys and and we'll get you hooked up so thank you everybody for watch, watching i cannot mm -hmm. say thank you enough uh, and until until we see you again somewhere in America, uh, we'll see you, Space Cowboy. Bye-bye.